Okay. Um, well, I'll call this meeting to order. Let's have a moment of silence, please. And the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Roll call, please. Mr. Caliguire. I'm here. Ms. Dharma. Mr. Dovey. Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Here. Mrs. Karamanugian. Present. Mr. Litwack. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. Ms. Tersich Keeley. Here. Could you please read the statement of adequate notice? Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Advertising in the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on January 14th, 2021. Hosting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on March 11th, 2021. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times and the Courier Post on March 11th, 2021 filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on March 11th, 2021, and posting the notice electronically on the district website at www.delanco.com on March 11th, 2021. Thank you. Welcome everyone. We appreciate you joining us this evening for this important meeting. Um, I'm not going to go into too much more detail other than we need to move forward and we're going to proceed now into public comment on any agenda items, please. I'll open that up. I don't see anybody with their hands up at this point in time. Oh, yep, I'm sorry. Yeah, you can't. Um, our picture's not there. This, this is Marilyn Entman um, under the guise of John Paye of 101 um, Delview Lane, Delanco. Uh, I have some suggestions. Uh, I'm a brainstormer, so I'm throwing some things out. But with the um, financial situation, uh, some of my thoughts, I taught for 20 some years and I went to graduate school. I have taught for Rowan University. I um, did teaching with Drexel and I don't know what the current situation is. I've been retired for over 10 years, but during my career, many times I wrote for grants and I know they come in popularity and go, but I wondered if there's any possibility that we can get some grants for the school. The town is full of some very ed highly educated and knowledgeable retired adults that maybe we could get volunteers to write for grants. The Red Dragon Canoe Club got a retired attorney to write for grants and got a, a substantial amount of money to redo their building. The roof alone cost over 400,000 and they restored the whole thing. So my thought is if somebody would consider volunteering or assisting in grant writing for the school. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time to comment. We will certainly look into that. Thanks, Marilyn. Um, is there, I'm sorry, Stephen, did you wanna? Um, I think that's legitimate. I mean, if there, if there are grants out there, that would apply to a to a school district like ours. I think we should, you know, we, we should fight to get our fair share of whatever funding is available. So, um, yeah, I'm still learning about what's available, but that's that sounds right on on track for me. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Marilyn. Absolutely. Is there anybody else that would like to make a comment at this point in time before I close it? Okay. I don't think I see anybody else. So Mike, I Mike Templeton. Oh, oh Mike, I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm There's three screens. I'm scrolling back and forth, back and forth. Sorry. <laughs> uh, good evening. Um, I, I just want to take a couple of minutes uh, to kind of go over a little bit what was said uh, last uh, last Wednesday's meeting. Uh, I went over and uh, thanks for posting the video of that uh, 
uh, your last meeting. Uh, it was very uh, is interesting seeing it and hearing it again. And I just wanted to, um, uh, I guess, set the record straight. Uh, there were there were several comments and quotes from various board members that um, uh, really need to be corrected before it gets too far out into the public domain. Uh, there were some comments like, uh, "Your school budget is um, is a percentage of the municipal budget." Um, it's the percentage of what the municipality gives um, gives the school to do with their budget. We're part of the town's budget. Um, and along with that, we're low on the priority list for the township. Um, can, can I, I know you want to finish. I don't comment. want you to interrupt me, OK? Can I just say yeah, yeah. It, it's really disrespectful when you jump in and interrupt people, OK? So thank Go you. It's, it, it's disappointing that so many of the board members made those comments. And it's equally disappointing other than Mr. Doby, who valiantly tried to explain it all several times over, that no one corrected any of the other board members, either the members of the board or the administration. Um, there's just a fundamental disconnect there. Um, hey, Mike. Um, because this doesn't pertain specific to the budget. I, well, it does pertain to the budget, Marissa. And but it pertains I think to, it's it to because... the comments that were made. So this may seem to fall more into non-agenda items since our well, agenda items. I, just, I disagree with that because you're going through the budget. budget well, and I'm sorry, I'm, the, the I'm presiding. So I would, la I would like you to week. please hold comment until um, public comment on non-agenda items because this is not specific to what is on this agenda. Your, your budget, your agenda opinion, is, it is more opinionated budget, and that can correct? certainly wait until after, if yeah. you don't mind, I appreciate that. Your, your support is on the school budget, correct? But you're speaking about what happened at last week's, at last week's meeting. So that- We're talking about agenda how today. the district prepares their budget, correct? Not in regards to the comments and what not in regards to um, what is listed on our budget at this point in time. So I would ask that if you would please, out of respect of, for the agenda and for the process, to please hold comment on non-agenda items until after we're finished. Well, it's, uh, it's your meeting uh, and uh, I don't wanna be gaveled uh, as uh, members of the township committee trying to make a point uh, with the school board, but I will hold my comments until the uh, the latter public comment session. But, and and uh, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else? Okay. I'm going to close this section of public comment on agenda items. And we are now going to move forward with the budget and finance committee report. Um, I don't see Harry on, so I will jump in and just say we are now going to move forward into the discussion and adoption of the 2021-2022 school budget year and the presentation that um, Ms. LaSalle is going to present. Vicki, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Okay, so I think you see the Delanco Township Board of Education 21-22 preliminary budget presentation. Yes. So uh, the presentation is going to um, include a slide on the assumptions used during the budget development process, methods undertaken to conserve district resources, the tax impact, and the district highlights. For enrollment and staffing, we assumed that the enrollment will remain constant. We are assuming a slight increase in tuition. Uh, the transportation increase is a little bit higher at 65000 the reduction and, and there will be a reduction in force of 5.2 uh, FTEs. Anticipated revenues, uh, we would like to um, raise a tax levy of $194,634, which would be a 3% tax increase. The debt service levy has an increase of 0.39%, which equates to $2,101. The federal revenue uh, is budgeted at 75% of the prior year revenue because you just never know the exact amount that you're going to get. Um, the state aid increase is 7.74% 7 
or $199,439 over last year's adjusted state aid. Um, and I say adjusted because we went through this process last year and created a budget. And then two months into the next year, the state came back and um, took back funds from all the school districts. Uh, they actually decreased ours by $115,000 and we had to reduce our revenues and expenses to cover that because we didn't have fund balance to offset it. Um, we've eliminated the XCARE revenue and we are currently in negotiations uh, for a new library lease. The overall decrease in revenue from last year to this year is 681, almost $682,000. For appropriations, um, we are continuing negotiations with the DTA. We are assuming a reduction in staff of 5.2. For insurance, the health benefits are remaining flat, which we're pretty lucky there because a lot of larger districts had a very um, a large hit to their budget for the chapter 44. Um, the dental increase is minimal at 1%. Workers comp property casualty, um, there was a confirmed 3% increase in that insurance. And we're assuming um, a slight increase in the PERS pension employer contribution to 85,000, it was a little over 82,000 this year. Um, the district has um, efforts to conserve uh, our resources. So they participate in shared services and jointures and cooperative purchasing agencies and we have a subcalling calling uh, consortium. The tax impact of this budget would be to raise that $194,634 would be a 3% increase. The rateables are uh, $404,426,400, which means that for $100 of an assessed home value, um, your rate is $1.786. And note that these rateables this year, um, the appeals have been extended to May, so that number may change, but it did go up from last year. Um, that means for the average homeowner in Delanco with an average assessed value of $190,000, your tax uh, levy this year would be $3,393.30, which is an increase of $58.86 over last year or $4.91 a month. The highlights for the district is that we're gonna um, maintain the current programs. There's two parent nights, um, the online resource renewals and materials to continue um, with the programs that we have in place. This year in the technology, we did use grant funding um, to purchase Chromebooks, charging cards, hotspots, and flat panels. We also made a, a lease purchase and we were able to update the, um, the servers. We purchased two new servers, access points, UPSs, flat panels, POS system uh, for the cafeteria, Chromebooks, and charging cards. With those Chromebooks, we were able to um, put a one, de one device in every student's hand. Um, and IT is still going to continue monitoring and assessing. Um, they're going to try to get in a security audit, new firewall, and secondary internet. They're just looking for ways in, in order to be able to put those in our budget. Um, there's also the Securing Our Children's Future Bond Act, which we have applied for. Um, we have not gotten approval to start spending the funds yet, but we will be doing minimal um, upgrades for our security with those funds. And that's it. Does anybody have any questions? What was the confidential there, Vicki? At the very last thing on that last- for Security upgrades. No, but it Underneath it just said, there was something that said confidential. Well, because it's yeah. security. Oh, oh, okay. What it specifically was, okay. Yeah. 
Good. We're like uh, 007. Mm -hmm. So um, now, Harry, I'm going to allow you to take over if you don't mind. So now, because we are in the Budget and Finance Committee report to, re to read the remaining aspects that were not read thus far, starting at whereas. I have no idea where you are. I'm sorry. We're literally but I, on the second page. Yeah, I, I, I need to pull it up. Though. Do you I want to do it? If you don't mind until I get it, or if you want to, I, I actually prefer if you wouldn't mind continuing. I'm not, you saw it took me a half hour to get on. So I. Uh, okay. Okay. Whereas the Delanco Township Board of Education recognizes school staff and board members will incur travel expenses related to, and this is regarding, I'm sorry, the 2021, 2022 travel and related expenses reimbursement. And um, let me do this so that I'm not dead into the screen. Okay, so the Delanco Township Board of Education recognizes school staff and board members will incur travel expenses related to and within the scope of their current responsibilities and for travel that promotes the delivery of instruction or furthers the efficient operation of the school district. And whereas NJAC 6A23B 1.1, requires board members to receive approval of these expenses by a majority of a full voting membership of the board and staff members to receive prior approval of these expenses by the superintendent of schools and the majority of the full voting membership of the board. And whereas a board of education may establish for regular district business travel only an annual school year threshold of $200 per staff member where prior board approval shall not be required unless this annual threshold or a staff member is exceeded in a given year, July 1 through June 30th. And whereas travel and related expenses not in compliance with NJAC 6A23B-1 period one, be de but deemed by the Board of Education to be necessary and unavoidable as noted on the approved Board of Education out of dist district travel and reimbursement forms. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education approves all travel not in compliance with NJAC 6A23B-1 period one as, as being necessary and unavoidable as noted on the approved Board of Education out of district, district travel and reimbursement forms. Be it further resolved, the Board of Education approves travel and related expense reimbursements in according to or with a a NJAC 6A 23B 1.2B to a maximum expenditure $7,250, excluding federal grant funds for all staff and board members. Be it further resolved that the tentative budget be approved for the 2021 2022 school year using the 2021 2022 state aid figures and the secretary to the Board of Education be authorized to submit the following tentative budget to the executive county superintendent of schools for approval in accordance with the statutory deadline. Then there's the general fund monies, special revenue monies, the debt service and the totals. And to advertise said tentative budget in the Burlington County Times in accordance with the form suggested by the State Department of Education and according to law. Be it further resolved that the Delanco Township Board of Education includes in the budget the use of the bank cap in the amount of $65,010. The purpose of the bank cap is to continue to provide resources to our schools as they meet the needs of our pupils in the areas of tuition costs, transportation, and teaching resources. The use of this bank cap cannot be deferred or incrementally completed over time. And be it further resolved that the public hearing be held virtually on May 5th, 2021 at 7 p.m. for the purpose of conducting a public hearing on the budget for the 2021 2022 school year. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Thank you, Bob. May I have a second, please? I'll second, Cameron. Um, questions or comments? This will require a roll call vote. Mr. Calabar. Vote no. Ms. Darmo? Mr. Dovey? Yes. 
Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Yes. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Cameron Ugian. Yes. Mr. Litwack. Mr. Litwack. He's on mute. Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. Is that your vote? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Uh, yes. Mrs. Tersich Keeley? Yes. Motion carries. Um, our distributions, all distributions are completely out. So that is good. And now we will open this up for public comment on non agenda items. And uh, Mayor Templeton, if you would like to speak at this time. Yeah, thank you. Uh, like I said, I was trying to correct some uh, some things that the various board members had had said last night that were to uh, a fairly large audience and uh, and perpetually available for uh, reviewing at, uh, at anyone's leisure. Uh, and and I was just like I said, it, it wasn't it was shocking in and of itself that uh, these misconceptions that somehow. The school budget is is derived from part of the municipal budget, um, and and uh, and as I said uh, earlier, that no one on the board or the administration corrected that. Um, as as Mr. Dovey said last night, uh, I've tried to explain uh, at our meeting uh, last Monday. Uh, Kate Fitzpatrick has explained over the past years for Arnolette. I mean, it's you have your budget. And we have our budget. You strike a tax rate, or the county strikes a tax rate based on what what you require, and a tax rate is struck for for what we we set as a budget. Um, <laughs> I guess in the simplest terms, um, there's a check that says you know pay to the order of Delanco Schools, and it's written on the bank of the Delanco taxpayers, and you get to fill in all the numbers. Uh, within you know the state restrictions and stuff, but that's your check. It's your blank check to fill that in with what you need. And I don't know why this this perpetual disinformation keeps going on uh, from from this board. Um, I want to talk about the pilots. Uh, I've disagreed with those from the beginning. Uh, I have a problem that they. They distort the local tax base. They cause confusion, as is evidenced um, from this body. Um, and it's per the you know various investigative uh, reports over the years, uh, going back to the New York or excuse me the New Jersey uh, State Comptroller, that the tax abatement and uh, payment in lieu, lieu of tax tax programs have been abused and uh, often improperly applied. So uh, I don't like them, uh, but there are some, a lot of the affordable housing projects because of the tax credits, because it is part of the affordable housing, um, they're required to have a pilot. But the, the others, the commercial industrial ones, um, I've had a problem with the one out in Cooperstown Road. I mean, it's been in place for nearly 20 years now. And uh, my comment uh, when these things uh, come up, uh, after the Deets and Watson fire was when, it, when is this piece of property going to grow up and be able to walk on its own and be a, a full gradable for this community. Um, but anyway, um, but the other part of the pilot equation is that money, those, that service charge as it's termed, that is now expected revenue coming into the municipality. And so it's not something that you have been shorted on page 66 of your financial report, it specifically says it has no direct impact on your budget. Because uh, we were not involved in that, that's why. Can, can I not be interrupted? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Um, so it doesn't have an, a direct impact on your budget, but the municipality now then becomes dependent on that service charge. Um, it, it, funds salaries, it funds projects, it lowers and it uh, augments our surplus, which we use to buy down the tax rate, which benefits the entire community. Uh, so I've, you know, been uh, called recently a naysayer on these, on these pilot deals. I don't like them, but it's what we've got right now. And 
and uh, uh, with our municipal budget, it's something that we actually start to count on. And so it's uh, saying that uh, we have this large uh, pile of money that's sitting around, that's already accounted for in many respects. And as you know, in do doing a budget, it, as soon as you take something away from one end, the string gets pulled from something else on the other end. So um, it's not quite as simple as some of you um, that uh, haven't been on, on a board or build a municipal or public budget like this, uh, don't really understand it yet, but that's, that's, the, that's the impact. Um, there has been some comments uh, at this past meeting and, and in past months about uh, vanity projects um, that the township has. And that's, that's really an insult. Um, I think it was in regards to the Field of Dreams. That's been a long time community project that goes back over 20 years. I mean, uh, Vic Vitorino, uh, John Brown, Marlene Jess, uh, Dave Rust, Phil McFadden have worked countless hours. It's an overused statement, but hours and years and years and years to bring that to what it is today and yeah, you spend some money to maintain it. Um, and that's part of a community. That's part of the big picture. And when someone describes that as a vanity project, um, that's an insult. And I think really kind of malicious. Um, and I would hope that um, that's the last I ever hear comments like that. Uh, the other thing is um, I've heard that, uh, you know, Mike Templeton and other people on the committee don't care about the schools. Um, and that's a disappointment as well. You don't know me. Um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that the people you think elected, sitting in a chair in a public forum, um, well, it just wouldn't, you wouldn't hear things like that. Um, 2004, the state wanted to bring in three dozen adjudicated youth to house at the Zerberg Mansion. And myself and several neighbors, um, Fernalette was one, uh, we jumped on that and filed OPA reports and did a lot of digging because we knew that was going to be a huge negative impact on the community and a huge impact on the school district. Um, and we passed the hat, we hired an attorney uh, my wife and I and a bunch of neighbors and a bunch of people in town, we wrote some big checks to pay the attorney to fight that until the township woke up and got on board with it. Um, my wife has taught, uh, she's a retired teacher. She taught special ed for 33 years. In our, in our 26 years together, I've picked up a few things. I've been in her classroom. I've gone to their, her school activities. I've chaperoned school trips. I've spoken at career day for several years. Um, and uh, uh, it's it, to, to say something like that, that I don't care about the schools or don't care about the kids. Um, like I said, you don't know me. Um, I've been, you know, the thing that bothered me uh, in the last uh, eight or nine years, the friends of ours uh, were moving out of town and we got talking with them and say, you know, wish you well, you know, what you know, was a job change? He said, no, uh, we're, we're trying to get our kids into a better school system. And that kind of, kind of straightened me up there. And I started hearing of other families that were leaving town or were putting their kids in private, uh, private placement. And uh, that's a problem. And I've been, you know, started pulling down, getting into the, the school performance reports. And yeah, you can, you know, a lot of that's based on the standardized testing everyone's taken the same bad test. So it's, it's really, you can do, look at an apples to apples comparison from you know, different districts. And again, as I said last Wednesday, looking at K through eight districts and so forth. And I've been at meetings, I've got more time in, in school board meetings than some of the members of the school board. So saying that, that uh, I don't care or don't have an interest, um, um, it's just, um, it's disappointing. Like I said, you don't know me, um, but I've been there and I've been pushing and trying to talk to people and encourage a difference. I've been to the Riverside School Board meetings. I went to the outbrief on the last year that they had the uh, standardized test and 
they're like near the bottom of the county and I can't seem to get any reaction in the school board or the board that that's a problem. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate, um, you know, I stood up in, in their meeting. There was me and a couple and that was it. It was an empty room. And I asked him, what's your plan? You got some of the worst scores in the county, nothing, silence. Um, so to say that I don't care and I'm not doing anything and trying to hurt the schools, well, you're wrong. And I would like to see you, you know, you on this board, you're the ones that choose the direction. You're the ones that are supposed to get into the budget and really find out what's going on there. And having a subcommittee that does your budget and then turn it over to the rest of the board. Um, I know in past years, most of the board members had no idea was that if they weren't on that subcommittee, had no idea what they were voting on. Um, and I think that's a fundamental structural problem uh, that you've got. I invited you know, school board uh, members to come to our first workshop. There's a lot of give and take, and it's, it's an open room. Um, very, all the departments, all the, you know, different boards and commissions, they come in, they present their budget, everybody sees what everybody else is doing. And they all understand, as I said, if you tug, if someone's got a cut in somewhere area or they got an extra expense, there's something else gets shorted on the other end because you're trying to stay within, you know, the tax bracket that you want to, you know, stay in. But um, uh, the, the last thing that uh, that I didn't quite hear order. Okay. that I heard, order. Please. please don't interrupt me. Marissa, do, I mean, we're, we're pushing 10 minutes. Do we have a time limit on public comments? Just a, just a point of order. Please, I, I'm just about done. And then I'll, I'll check off. Um, the final comments that I, that I missed last Wednesday, but reviewing the, the video of it, was uh, a chorus of no, no tax increase, no tax increase. Um, just fundamental economics, you got to have a tax increase to keep ahead of things. And looking at uh, that financial report that I alluded to uh, last week that I tried to direct you to, uh, there were a couple of years you had really minimal tax increases and that might've been enough to satisfy the budget. But I think that's when your financial problems began was five, six, seven years ago. Um, and so now the wave has hit, uh, it actually started to hit last year. But uh, you know, as much as you want to minimize the tax impact on the community. Um, if you want to have a healthy financial state going forward, uh, you need to, to plan on some tax increase. And it's our job as elected officials and your job as, as board members to be able to fully explain that. If you want quality schools, you've got to pay for it. And as uh, I think Vince said, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, so I'll close out. I've said my piece, but uh, thank you. This is going to be a long meeting. I just want to keep my response real quick here. Um, so first of all, Mike, I'm, I mean, I think we're all disappointed that the township wasn't able to help us out. I mean, we're in an emergency situation, but it's over. I mean, the discussion is done. We're making our decisions tonight. And we're moving on. I just want to make a quick correction on a couple of little things because I don't appreciate my words being misrepresented by you. So first of all, it, you're accusing us repeatedly of spreading disinformation. You're saying that this idea that you can break up the overall tax base into a percentage of the township budget and the school budget, you're saying that that in itself is disinformation, which is, it's, it's not. I mean, this is a bigger discussion, but there's that. Uh, you quoted us saying um, we're part of the township budget, right? So that's, nobody said that as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm aware. Uh, you said, I, I didn't use the term vanity project. Um, and nobody here said that we can't have any tax increases. It's, the situation, this is a short-term problem. Um, at, I mean, at the moment, we're in a jam. Longer term, yes, we're, I'm new to the board. We're interested in making the changes we need to, uh, to get ourselves to a healthy budget. But, but yeah, this, is a, this issue is done and we're, we're moving on tonight and doing our, making our decisions. So thanks for the comment, Mike. Well, thank you. And just, and just to add, I mean, we, we really never got any, any detail of any financial information uh, you know, from, from the board. I mean, uh, I've got I've got a pie chart uh, with some broad brush numbers, but I we I think really we, we communicated. I think we we really we did a great. I think we did a thorough job of communicating the situation. And two members of the township committee were interested in. I'm not aware it. of anything. Three were not. So I don't have anything. On. That's all I've got. So. 
So, uh, oh, Lachlan, just, just so the group is aware, the presiding officer may limit public comment to five minutes if the presiding officer believes that this portion will exceed 30 minutes. So th mm -hmm. there are there is a stipulation in policy, but Thank we you. typically haven't used that, but the presiding officer may use that. And who is the providing officer? That would be me. The president. <laughs> that would be me, Harry. I didn't feel it was necessary to cut Mike off at this point in time. I wanted him to be able to speak his piece, to be respectful. Um, and we've never done it before, so there's no reason to start today in regards to a specific comment. I didn't mean to step on anyone's toes. I just know we've got 68 people on the line, so everyone's time is important. So thanks, Mike. Thanks for the courtesy. I think this is great that this is being discussed at the the township level and the school board level, which hadn't been done before. That's why some of the distrust and the confusion and it's educating and re-educating ourselves. And the difference is, as Bob is going to find out between, you know, the, the guidelines for township and how that's run and what school board rules, regulations, et cetera. But it's the, the idea that to me is that it's the same taxpayers and Mike, the problem is, and, and just like you said, you were not for pilots, you have to live with them. And, you know, the problem was just now, but it's for the next 30 years, Mike, that the schools see no money from that. That's the problem. And it was recognized by um, Evesham, who had the same developer we had that said, hey, you know, we, we're benefiting and it's costing the schools and it's not the seesaw, the balance doesn't work anymore the way it did prior. And they're two totally different concepts. That's why I don't understand, you know, if, if someone's representing, we're representing the children and the educational interests in the town. Well, that's a subset. We're a subset of what the township does. You're not a subset of us, we're a subset of you your decisions affect our budget. You know, when that happens, it affects our budget. If we, you know, if we shoot ourselves in the foot, okay, it's our responsibility. But if you shoot us in the foot, I don't know, we still have the pain in the foot, but to argue over whose responsibility, it's all of our responsibilities and it's all of our duties to try and figure out how to communicate better, how to make things work, how to keep each other informed, this is, to me, this is wonderful. This is a great breakthrough. And that Vicki went and presented here. We, you know, here we were, we're trying to tell you. Two years ago or three years ago when I was president, I, that's exactly what I was trying to do. It, 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 nothing happens real fast in Delanco. So uh, there's a lot of lags and not, and not just in Delanco. And uh, Mike, you're in politics, you see. Um, it's a slow moving giant ship, but if we're all, facing the same way on the deck, we're going to get somewhere. Otherwise, it's, it's, it becomes petty and self-destructive, and it shouldn't be about people. It should be about issues. I mean, I, I know personally I don't like or dislike anyone more or less because of their points of views or differences or how they vote. That's being an adult in a democracy. That's why you elect people, because you think they're the people that can best serve the Delanco Township. So that's my thoughts on it. And uh, I look forward to working together the best way we can, everybody. It's, you know, unless someone's gonna allow the township or the county or the state to start printing money, we gotta work together. Thank you, Harry. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Chris, if I, if I may. You may. Um, I just want to say this, we could talk about how we got to this point and everything else, but you know, the, what we're facing tonight are cuts that I've, we've never seen before for a school, I mean, for, for a suburban middle-class school district facing the kind of cuts we're talking about. And I know we can't get too much detail, but, but folks are going to see the kind of cuts, this is going to resemble like a school that you're used to, not what activities and sports that you're used to, not with the same kind of teachers, it was the same kind of curriculum. And it's hard to imagine that we're, we're cutting even more. Every year I've been here, we've cut, we've cut, we've cut. And, you know, my, my civilian job as, as a, I'm a financial analyst partially for, for DEP. And I'm, I look at, and I've seen what we've gone through and everything. And, and you know, I could say, honestly, you know, we've made, we made good decisions as, as we move forth. And we try to be 
you know, physically, uh, fiscally sound. But what we're facing here, I mean, it's going to change the whole landscape of what the students are facing here, especially, I think, for the middle school. And I just want, want people to understand that what we're facing. And I, I you know, make a point to try to let people know because it is concerning. I know people who don't even have kids in the school would understand that all we're asking for is an average school. That's all we're ever asked for when, we, when we're coming here, you know? Um, but what we're facing now, I, I, it's scary being a parent and having kids face this kind of thing. Uh, and that's what we're looking at. And that's where I think we, we, you know, when we get passionate about it, Mike, like, that's where we're coming from. And we're, we're desperate at this point. And, and if it comes off that way, I, I you know, I don't apologize because we're trying to make it desperate. It's a desperate situation and we do need help. And I just, uh, I just hope that's considered. If what we can't take care of tonight or the next meeting that we look out for the school and how we can recover from what's going to be cut, you know, in the, in, in the, as the year progresses and we get into the next school year. And with everything with COVID, we, we got to do something more for, for these kids. I feel like we're going to lose a generation. I, I, I know it sounds like a bold statement, but it's true. What do you expect when, when we're taking everything away from them? And um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, Ms. Harper wanted to say something. Mrs. Harper. Hello, I had to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> all right. So most of you know who I am. So you know I try to make nice. But as a longtime resident and as the DTEA president, I'm going to speak slowly and calmly. First, I would like some clarification with the 5.2 full-time employees. The positioning of that statement was under teacher salaries. And it really seems like there's a misconception that the only salaries in this entire district are the teachers. Nowhere is there mention that you've got how many administrators and we've got a couple BAs and we've got um, maintenance staff that are not teachers in the teachers union. We, we have, you know, several that are not, but it's always the teacher salaries. I want to know that 5.2, are you saying that we're going to cut 5.2 teachers? Can I, can I, um, speak for a second. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it might have been misleading and I apologize for that. Um, it's on the slide that is talking about appropriations, so expenditures. But it's also on the teacher slide, under teacher okay. salary negotiations. It's That's right under that. About. So it says appropriations, it's under budget development assumptions, appropriations, salaries. We're continuing negotiations with the DTA. And then the next 5.2. But the next bullet point is reduction in staff, not teaching staff. It doesn't mean teaching staff. I apologize for that confusion. It's it. I, it's it's it's, uh, it's a total separate bullet. All it's right. Not well, just I thank you for that. But I also a comment that was just made was that it's going to affect Walnut Street. Um. I just I'm I'm trying to figure out oh, uh, what that. Comment, yeah, Ms. Harper. It's it was uh, been. Mr. Calgar. I apologize. Um, I, I think I'm specifically speaking just because I think you know my, my kids are in that school, so I, I take right, right. Um, okay. Nothing okay. In specific. Um, 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 just talking in turn. I just. Uh, I I just want to make it clear that it always is. Oh, these teacher salaries. These teacher salaries, and there are other employees, and I think that that's what it just. It just really hits a nerve with me that it's always the teachers. Oh, no, I wasn't actually- No, 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 I'm not, size, I'm, not uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Calibre, I don't mean your comment. Um, I, I just, it just, it always comes back that it's, it, that it's the teachers. And, um, you know, it's, it's, all right. But, but thank oh. you for clearing up the 5.2 um uh full-time employees i didn't know what the public knew that fte means full-time employees so well, all right. to, thank to you add more clarity to that mrs harper and for everyone five point the 5.2 represents staff uh meaning teaching staff and other staff so just you know for 
absolute perfect clarity. It means staff in different areas of, of, our, of our district. So, and yes, it does include teaching staff, but not only teaching staff. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dancer has his hand up. You can unmute yourself if you'd like to speak at this time. How you doing, Rob Dancer, Hickory Street? Um, it sounds like uh, the school board saying we're in a bind for the budget. And I just want to know, because I brought it up in the past and it's never really went anywhere, where we're at on looking at regionalization. Um, it seems to me like we have three school districts and one zip code. It's almost comedic at that point. I get how the board might not want to give up their local control, you know, that we have now. I get, so of course you wouldn't want to go out of your way to, to do it. I get the superintendent might not want to go out of the way in case that position gets eliminated, but I feel like we're not being adults about this. And it's been something that's been talked about for years. Uh, every time I brought it up, I get, well, we have shared services and then that's it. So I'd really just kind of like to know, is this the point where we get to say, yes, let's try and figure this out, what we can do about it. Well, that's a great point. A couple of meetings ago, we, as the board, um, authorized Mr. Harry Litwack to explore the regionalization plan that was going on currently. And um, I'll allow him to speak a smidgen on it. Um, not too long, of course, but if you wanted to go into it, Harry, a little bit. You're on mute. You're on mute. <clears throat> there you go. No, you're on mute again. You can hear me. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, there's a lot in asking that question, and I've been asking that question for quite a number of years. And we're finally at a point where um, something is actually being done and stuff that we looked into two, three years ago. I've been active because I represent not only Delanco, but Burlington County. And actually this coming Friday evening, I will bring your concerns and uh, it'll be from you, Mr. Danzer, that um, what's going on with that and how are we dealing with it? And there's a big push for that. And there's also uh, a plan. There's uh, money involved to do studies. It's, it's called a LEAP, LEAP grants. And there's benefits to it that there's also not necessarily a risk, but one of the benefits is they suspend um, like where you are budget wise, you, you're not under the normal budget constraint for the year that you're analyzing what you're going to do. And then afterwards, if you decide not to go through with doing something, you just revert back to your normal, what we do now as far as budgetary. But if we decide, and it wouldn't be just us alone, it would be, and we're looking at, I've already contacted uh, basically the superintendent at BCIT and Berlin County Special Services. And it's one of the same person, Chris Nagy. And he is for having satellite. Um, they have wonderful programs. I'm, I've been on their advisory board and I worked there for about three years doing apprenticeship. And, setting up their school to work office. And the, they have, they don't have space. They want to educate more kids. They don't have space. So, um, and Steve Sweeney, who's been a proponent of this and our own Mr. Caligar can attest to it in um, Salem County. They're looking at making Salem County a one district county. That's it. they will be, I guess, the Salem County School District. And they literally have, I think it's about, you can correct me, Vince, if I have numbers wrong, but about 65, 66,000 people in the county. It's literally the same size of the town in Cumberland County, Vineland, where I happen to grow up. And it's 17% savings that the town of Vineland gets compared to what is spent in the whole county of Salem. So people are, as you say, looking at it as adults, not just as you know, th this is our history here. Every town has a history, but all towns and all history changes. I think we need to be, it either changes because it's done proactively 
or it changes often because you have no other choice. Um, and right now we're at a crossroads and that's gonna be explored. So I hope that answers questions. And I even today, I've been pushing the county on the 25th, uh, I've been pushing the school boards association on the 25th, as Marissa knows, there's gonna be a um, countywide meeting of all the presidents of the school boards that want to be from Burlington County. There's 42 districts in the county. And I've been um, pushing so that we have our legislators at least tuning in, not necessarily you know, contributing, but hearing what is actually happening from the presidents of each district, what their individual problems are, what their common common problems are, how are they addressing them? And then to make sure that everybody in fact knows what rules we're operating by and what changes, then have the legislators the last 15 or 20 minutes of that evening clarify any problem situations so that everyone in the county is leaving with the same basic information and it'll make it easier to move forward with regionalization, whatever we're going to do, that people are not hearing it for the first time. They don't feel threatened by it. It's not something that's done for any other reason, just that we're looking, it may, you may look at it and it isn't conceivable to do. The feasibility, these are about feasibility studies. And part of it is that they always run into, oh, well, uh, the contracts, and they have ways to look at it. They know it's not a, a one or two year process. It may be an eight or 10 year process. So that's the update that I can share with you at this point. And hopefully um, we'll be able to look at that because I think it'll just benefit uh, a district like ours in all kinds of ways and sharing services and more jointures for special education, mm -hmm. special programs or um, classes that we only have two days a week and another district has three days a week. And looking at us regionally, my hope as an educator is that we come together and have a consistent basic K to six at least um, curriculum and instruction. So that it wouldn't matter wherever you go so that we could build a great County middle school, because we know anyone going there has the same K to six curriculum. Okay. So those are some of the ideas. Uh, okay. Quick question for you, Harry. I don't want to uh, belabor this too much, but um, I mean, there are a lot of benefits to having control of our own school district. And since the special ed costs are the stumbling block, you think, it, I mean, it would one of the options be just hypothetically to you know, pursue the regional, the benefits of regionalization for special ed, but maintain our school district, you know, otherwise as it is, or uh, under the laws, they're federal laws. You you have to have children be in the least restrictive environment, which is okay. thought to be their home district among peers in a, uh, you know, with accommodations. It, 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 okay. It's a great idea. That's what I was asking. A, it sounds uh, like a longer uh, you know, conversation. Yeah. It's certainly but something we want but to we explore could have more. Regional yes. programs in this area and that would be the best appropriate program regionally for our district. Yep. So it happens to be in Cinnaminsa and or we do that now, we do that now. Well, thanks for all the good information, Harry, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else that would like to make a comment on a non-agenda item before we close? Okay, I don't think I see anybody having their hands up. Is there any, oh, Mr. Messa? Uh, yeah, just, just real quick. I just kind of wanted to say kind of a point of order on one thing. Yeah, there, there was one comment that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and I hate to kind of call this out. Um, you know, we're, we're not looking to be an average school district. We're looking to be above average. We're looking to be excellent. All right. So let, let's take that out of kind of consideration there. And I'm sorry if I'm taking your comment out of context there. Um, but it, none of us here want an average school district. We want a school district that's gonna be above average. And if people are leaving the school district or leaving the town because of the school district, that's a problem. I know that we've explored bringing special education students back. That wasn't part of this particular uh, presentation. We went over to shared services thing. It was, it was went over very quickly by Vicki there, but looking at that screen that I, I took a screenshot of real quick as it was going, 
I mean, that, that's all stuff that we're already doing. What else has been explored shared services wise? Is there anything being added in that this year, shared services wise to save money? Um, you know, I, I don't know the answers to those questions because I, I, I haven't seen the budget line item by line. Item. And, and, you know, it, like Mayor Templeton said, nobody really has. We, we have these budget, uh, you know, meetings that, that thankfully a lot of community members are coming on board to um, now that they're being held via Zoom because of the pandemic and all that. But, um, you know, it, some more clarity, I think, would be great on that. And, and I'm sorry to call you out on, on you know, call the, the one board member out on that one comment, but um, nobody's goal should be to be average. Eric, it's Vince. No, I totally agree with you. I'm, I just want us to get to that average mark. I mean, that's what we're, I guess that's the best part of where we have to go, you know, and I, I totally agree with you. Like, and that's what bothers me here. I hate that we're, we're giving these kids, you know, not a lot to work with and the teacher's not a lot to work with. And, and, and what can they do with what they have? It's, but you're right. We should definitely shoot, uh, you know, that's what we are shooting for is above average, but we got to get, we got to take these small uh, increments as we go, man. But um, no, you're absolutely right. Thank you. Uh, and the focus should be on, like you said, uh, and Mayor Templeton said as well, uh, everything is on uh, your school district ratings are based upon a, you know, a bunch of standardized tests It's from time to time, right? Yes. So the focus has to be on academically, um, you know, what those tests are. You're not teaching to the test or anything. Please don't misconstrue that comment, right? But it, it has to be like the programs, when we start offering programs back, it has to be based upon those things that are going to help those scores. And that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. Mrs. Atkinson, you, you wanted to speak? Yeah. I, I'm just questioning how much more we can actually cut. Because 5.2 staff, even if that's two teachers, that's an entire grade level of teachers. Um, there's already very few after uh, school and extracurricular activities at the middle school. You look on other middle schools, like Del Rand's website, there's pages of them. We offer nothing. So I know that there was discussion about having community members come in and do them. I volunteered, nothing ever was done. Um, so I don't know where we're going, but raise my taxes. Honestly, raise them, fund the school. That's what needs to happen. Don't be shy about raising taxes. We have one of the lowest tax rates around, as far as I know, we need to get to where we are. And if that's the only way to do it, then raise my taxes. Can some, um, and I'm sure there's other people that would agree. Thank you. We're, we're, I guess the question, oh, I, I just have a question, which is like, is, is it technically, oh, thank you for the comment, by the way. That's, that's great. Is it technically feasible? Like if we raise taxes today at this meeting, could we meet our budget shortfall? Like, is that even, we're at the max of what we can raise our budget currently, correct, Vicki? We can't go any higher. We're limited to what we can raise it to. So I think to raise, to raise higher, we would have to do a, a referendum in the town, right? So correct. I think that's not on the table for right now. Just wanted to clarify at that. At this point in time, it's not on the table. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to speak at this time? I don't see any other hands up, but just in case. Anybody else? This is Karen Manoogie, and I just wanted to make a comment about our budget. Okay. And I appreciate all the comments and all the questions. Uh, I, could, I could say a lot about everything that was said, um, but what I will say right now, though, is that uh, we are expecting to receive additional federal funding at some point in the future. It has been announced. We've seen newspaper articles about it. Uh, I've reached out to the county office. Uh, they said that everything is in the developmental stages when it comes to the guidance that they're going to give us when it comes to allocating those funds and, and utilizing those funds for, for our programs and for staffing. So although the budget as it is right now, uh, it, it includes a number of cuts, that does not mean that those cuts couldn't be resolved somehow by the additional funding that we will be receiving. The, the problem and, and the challenge is the timeline that I, I asked the county, will the timeline change? Will we have an extension? They said no. So our budget still needs to be approved and submitted by a certain date, which uh, technically this year is March 20th. Uh, so you know, when, when it comes to that, uh, it, th there isn't time over the next three days for the federal government to say, oh, here's your money to, to fix 
your budget. Because in fact, it's not just the federal government that's involved. It gets filtered through the state government where they provide us with the process for how to acquire those funds. So it is a process. It's my hope that we receive that funding sometime within the next few weeks, because then we could have the funding prior to the May public hearing of the budget. If we don't receive it by then, uh, our, you know, our budget will be what it is. However, if we receive it afterwards, uh, we, will, we will revisit the budget. That's what we did last year when they took the funding from us and, and, and reduced the funding. So uh, there's, there's, there, it, I would say that there's hope over the horizon. It's just a matter of we don't know when that's coming, when that money will be coming. And, and, and with the government, they said immediately. We don't know what that means. Uh, immediately in my mind means today, tomorrow, somewhere, somewhere soon, but it, it's, it, it could be weeks, it could be months. Is that they, they understand that we have a difficult situation right now. We will be receiving additional funding that will help tremendously. And I don't want us to overlook that, but we're still kind of caught with those, with, with the standards and the, the guidance that we have right now that we still must follow. So it's, it, we're definitely, we definitely have our back up against the wall with this, the timeline that the county and the state require. So I just want to clarify that, that additional funding will come, but we cannot include that in the budget that was approved tonight yet. It, it will be included at some point in the future. Thank you. That is very important to make note of. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further questions at this time, I'm, I will close the public comment or non-agenda items. So it's now closed. Is there a reason to go into executive session? Uh, only if the board or, or individual board members or the board wishes to go into, exec, into executive session. Mm -hmm. I'll move to go into executive session. Or, or, or can I make, can I move, or maybe you have to move, Marissa. Um, did, you, so you would like to speak about um, an executive? Yeah. I think we, we have a reason. Items related to this uh, presentation? Uh, yes. Is, I would like to as well go to executive. Okay. So let's see. It is currently 810. I would say no more than an hour. So we'll be back hopefully at 910. Um, so um, again, can I have a motion to go into executive? Vera Dara makes a motion. Thank you, Vera. And a yep. second, please. I'll second that. Stephen Lord, or I'm sorry, Stephen McLaughlin. I'm so sorry. Um, um, questions or comments to go in? Okay. So we're um, all in favor to go into executive? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. So we're going to now go into executive session. You're going to utilize the link that was recently sent to you. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Five-year tax abatement on homes. And next to it was just to say the sign for the homes in Blanco. I, I think this was interesting seeing that. Yeah. Um, that motion was by Phil and the second was that by Bob? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, meetings adjourned. Good night, all. Good night, Good night. thank you. Good night,